let's see here. So, once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a young girl named... No? You want a different story? But sweetheart, we've read just about every storybook you have. Okay, um, let's see what we have here. Uh, how about... Uh, Beauty and the Beast? No? Sleeping Beauty? Oh, hey, honey. What are we up to? Well, our little munchkin and I are trying to come to a decision on what bedtime story we should have tonight. How about Snow White? No? Okay, then. What story do you want me to tell you, then? Cinderella? Sure, I can tell you that story. Uh, but, <laughs> but you want me to make it about me and Mommy? Hmm. No, 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 I, I actually, I think I can do that. But I'll need to get a few things. Both of you, wait right there. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Uh. Almost back. Okay, I think I've got everything I need. <laughs> huh. Yes, I promise I'll make sure to put everything back where it goes when I'm done. So, I present to you the story of Cardlinella. <laughs> yes, I'm being totally serious. So, once upon a time, there was a young man named Cardlin. He was very sad because even though he was one of the kindest people in the land, his wicked stepbrothers didn't like him. It would make him do all the housework while they went and did fun things without him. In fact, they would call him Cardlinella, behind his back, because he would always sit by the fireplace to stay warm and would get dirty from the ashes. No, it doesn't really work in this translation. It's okay, it's fine. Yes, that was very mean of them. But then one day, they received a special invitation that a beautiful princess from far away would be coming to their land, and every young man in the kingdom was invited to meet her at a ball. It was a ball. It was ball-like. Of course, Cardlin was more than excited about getting to meet a princess. But his two stepbrothers didn't want him to go. So they wasted no time in thinking of extra chores for him to do, keeping him so busy that he didn't finish until they were leaving for the ball. All alone, Cardlin started to cry, since it seemed that there was no way that he'd be able to make it to the ball to meet the princess. But then, all of a sudden, his fairy godmother appeared. Hold on. Let's do some... Ah! Here we go. See, babe, I told you keeping this fuzzy robe was a good idea. So. My dear Cardlin, I have seen your tears, and because of your kind heart, I have come to make sure you go to the ball. And with a wave of her magic hand, Cardlin's rags turned into the finest garment he had ever seen. He was quite fly, as they said in his time. And of course, if he was going to have new clothes, he needed new shoes, too. Hang on, let me uh, change into my there's other robe. My slippers. There. What do you mean I have the wrong shoes? And what's wrong with having bunny slippers? Yes, I know Cinderella had glass slippers, but let's just pretend for the sake of the story that these are the finest glass shoes in the kingdom, okay? Good. And so, after being reminded he could only stay until midnight before everything disappeared, Cardlin quickly headed off to the celebration. By the time he arrived, the ball had already started and the entire kingdom was there. And since he had not been dressed in such fine clothes for so long, no one recognized him. Not even his stepbrothers. But as he looked across the room, he finally caught sight of who he was looking for. The beautiful princess. 
Yes, of course that's you. I already had to be the fairy godmother. I can't play the princess, too. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. You being the beautiful princess and me the mysterious stranger who's destined to sweep her off her feet. Great. All right. Here's your, uh, here's your robe. And one of these uh, dress-up crowns for your hair. Perfect. Definitely the most beautiful princess I've ever seen. Oh, sorry. The most beautiful princess I've ever seen. So, where was I? All right. So, when he saw the princess, he knew instantly that he was in love with her and wasted no time in introducing himself. He went up to her, gave her a very royal bow, and definitely did not almost trip, and gave her hand a kiss like this. Mwah. It's an honor to meet you, your highness. May I ask you for a dance? What do you mean you can't dance? Sure you can. Here, I'll show you. Just put one hand on my sho uh, shoulder, and I'll put my hand around your waist, and then we get a little closer to each other. Um, uh, like this. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, step back with your right foot. Your, your right foot. That's okay. Let's try it again. Uh, right foot back. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There you go. You're doing great. What? Uh, why are you looking at me like that? You, you think this is really romantic? Waltzing in our robes in our child's room for a story. Why? My dear princess, I think you're right. We should do this kind of thing more often. Especially if it means I get to hold you close, like this. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> Story. Well, uh, 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 Codlin and the princess were having such a wonderful time that he completely forgot to keep track of the time. So he was surprised when he heard the clock strike twelve. Remembering what the fairy godmother said would happen at midnight and how everything would disappear, Cardlin quickly ran away, leaving behind one of the shoes that had slipped off his foot in the process. Oh, my bunny slipper. Here you go. How's the part where you say, I shall not rest until I find one whose foot fits this slipper. <laughs> Very nice. So immediately the search began for the mysterious young woman who had captured the princess's... No, wait. The mysterious young man who had captured the princess's heart, trying the shoe on every man that claimed he was the one. But after three days of searching with no results, the princess was beginning to fear that she would never find him again. Meanwhile, Cotton had returned back to his old life, trying to forget that night in the princess. After all, he wasn't a prince. He was single and living free and could do whatever he want and played video games at any hour without someone telling him that he should go to sleep. He had nothing to offer her. But then the princess's search brought her to his home and, wanting to see her one last time, he went to speak to her while she rested at the well. Yeah, well, sure, why not? Uh, oh, uh, my lady, are you all right? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. What's my name? Uh, I'm C Cardlin, your highness. I, I look familiar to you. Well, actually... Yes, your highness, we have met once before. Yes, we did dance together at the ball. 
Of course. I'd be honored to try on that royal glass bunny slipper. Just let me sit down right here and... It's a perfect fit. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Looks like someone's getting sleepy. Mm, <laughs> you go on ahead. I'll be there in a second. And then what happened? Well, uh, well, uh, Codlin and the beautiful princess got married. Found a place of their own. And had a little child of their own whose only command was that their father tell them stories every night and watch the same Disney movies over and over and over again. And luckily, because he loved her very much, he definitely did not get tired of them, ever. And they all lived happily ever after. I like that story, too. <laughs> Good night, Pancake. Mwah. I'll see you in the morning, okay? Whew. I thought she'd never get to sleep. So, what did you think of uh, my little story? Yeah, well, I'm not, a, you know, exactly trained in these accents. Well, I think it was one of my best stories, if I say so myself, so, hmm. Plus, it helped that I had a beautiful princess to help me tell it. Come here. Hey, it's getting late. We should probably start heading to bed ourselves. Oh. You want a story before bed, too, huh? And what kind of story would you like? My choice, huh? Well, why don't we take this into the bedroom and see where it takes us from there?